are these people? Our first story is about election 2024. <laughs> mm. wow. But incredible. But it's from a censorship angle, and this is from an INN member, the dissident. So this is an original mm. article that was published this week before all the nonsense. And it's looking not just at the records of Trump and Biden, but it's really at the records of the Democrats and the Republicans on the issue of censorship and free speech and where both of them are woefully awful and corrupt. All right. So dissident starts saying that he recently published a piece entitled Election 2024 Blue Warmonger versus Red Warmonger, where I compared Trump and Biden's equally abysmal records on foreign policy, specifically on Ukraine and Palestine. This article will be a sequel, which will examine the candidates equally abysmal records on free speech and their treatment of whistleblowers, dissident journalists and activists, something that's kind mm. of near and dear to our hearts. So I appreciate yeah. our friend, the dissident for writing this. Um, so, so let's start with Joe Biden. I will expand this to the Joe Biden administration from prosecuting whistleblowers to creating a ministry of truth. Obama and Biden's unprecedented war on whistleblowers. The Barack Obama administration, where Biden served as vice president, used the Espionage Act to prosecute more whistleblowers than all other administrations combined before it. And Thanks, since, Obama. Yeah. These whistleblowers, documented by the American Prospect, are the following. So we have Shamai Leibowitz, who was an FBI contractor, who leaked documents. Shamai Leibowitz. But he proved criminal activity done by the FBI. Documents were never published, mm -hmm. by, but the Obama-Biden DOJ still prosecuted him under the Espionage Act. Mm -hmm. Then we had Thomas, yep. Thomas Drake, who was an, S N an NSA whistleblower who leaked information about illegal activities and manage mismanagement in the NSA to the press. We had Stephen Jinwoo Kim. We very famously State Department Right, arms expert who leaked information from an intel report about North Korea responding to UN sanctions with a nuclear weapons test to journalist James Rosen. And then, most famously, Chelsea Manning, a U.S. intelligence analyst who leaked information to WikiLeaks, proving the U.S. committed war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. Manning, of course, was... Of course, Manning, of course, was kept in solitary confinement for a year, which the U.N. Special Rapporteur for Torture called uh, called uh, chief, called cruel, inhuman, degrading treatment. I believe that was at Leavenworth. Come on, man. <laughs> no. No. And then we had Jeffrey Sterling, and we covered a Jeffrey Sterling. When Jeffrey Sterling first got out yeah. of prison in 2021, in the summer of 2022, um... Former CIA official who leaked information to the New York Times journalist James Risen, now of The Intercept, about Operation Merlin, a CIA operation that intentionally gave Iran bad design information for a nuclear weapon. Uh huh? If, if we continue down this path, you'll find out that if you give information to The Intercept, you're going to go to jail. Most likely. Then we had Kiriakou, of course. Just saying. Friend of the show, Kiriakou. CIA official who revealed mm -hmm. the agency used torture during the war on terror, right? And then James Hitzelberg, who a Navy linguist accused of printing classified documents. Now, that's not one that's as well known. And then, of course, also most famously, Edward Snowden, the NSA contractor stuck in Siberia, uh, who revealed that the agency was illegally spying on Americans. Obama Biden went so far as to ground the plane of the Bolivian president Evo Morales because they thought he could be harboring Snowden potentially. Yep. All right. Um, in all of these cases, the whistleblowers were not leaking information that would hurt the country, but were instead leaking information about corruption, human rights abuses, and unconstitutional activity that the American public has a right to know. This is considered by most to be a heroic and patriotic act. Still, the Obama and Biden White House used the Espionage Act to prosecute these whistleblowers to stop insiders from leaking information about government secrets and corruption. Of course they did, because it was their corruption. As president, Joe Biden has continued the war on whistleblowers. He took part in as vice president. 
The Biden DOJ sentenced, of course, our friend whistleblower Daniel Hale to 45 months in prison for leaking information about America's drone strike program, including the fact, yep. the fact that they killed innocent civilians 90% of the time. And of course, until recently, mm -hmm. Joe Biden continued the prosecution of journalist Julian Assange, journalist and publisher Julian Assange, started by the Trump administration. More on that later. Assange has thankfully been set free on a plea deal, but the deal creates a precedent that could now be used to prosecute more journalists for publishing classified information. Very yeah. possibly. Well, quite, quite most definitely. But let's not also forget that Joe Biden created a Ministry of Truth headed by a Russiagate lunatic. And we covered that extensively, mm -hmm. even as late as two weeks ago, when we covered the FOIA files that reverse, that reverse engineered the Twitter files to look from freedom of information requests, exactly what were the communications. And we found out that here, as President Joe Biden created a division of the Department of Homeland Security called the Disinformation Governance Board, a name eerily, a, a name eerily reminiscent of the Ministry of Truth in George Orwell's 1984, of course, the division head was given to Nina the singing crazy person Jankowitz, someone who herself has a long history of spreading pro-security state misinformation. In 2018, and she he ran a bunch of bad boys. Hey, that, that was Corn Pop, not Nina. Why, why is my camera like that? I, why am I? Oh, hey, I, where's where's hey, Reef? Wait, where is me? Where? where Direction? Wait. Do I even go? What? Hold on. Let me. Well. Okay. Uh, I guess I got to fix that right now. What the heck? How did that happen? What is, what is that? I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't know, well, there sir. I am. <laughs> I don't know, minute, sir. It was like seven seconds delay on what I, I like slid over. But uh, okay. Yeah. Bro. Weird. Okay, uh, give me a second. Let me. <laughs> no, go where you need to go so that I can position you right, you silly. <laughs> right. I mean, I don't know. What the heck? Like, wait, I have, I have the wrong camera turned on. That's what's going on. That makes uh, sense. No. Pep cap, pep cap. Okay, Pep cap. I'm here. I'm here with that. Okay, here we go. We're going to be okay. Now we got you. Now we got you. Okay, fix fix yourself. All right. Can, can, can I get back to my story now? Thank you. Maybe. Oh, shit. Okay, in 2018, <laughs> she shared an article from the Western <laughs> Intelligence sort, uh, Connected Outlet, Belling Crap. Which blamed, of course, Assad yeah. for the 2018 chemical attack in Duma, Syria. We're getting back to Nina Jankowicz, the singing lunatic. All right? Yeah. This allegation was used as justification for the U.S. bombing of Syria and almost triggered a full-scale war with Syria. Of course it did, because that was their, their plan. This allegation was later contradicted yeah. by OCPW whistleblowers, very famously, who found evidence that the gas yeah. canisters in Duma were placed and that the victim's sy symptoms did not match up with those of a chemical attack and that the CNN reporter was probably full of shit because she <laughs> smelled chlorine in the air, literally. That was how they determined it was a chemical attack. Uh-huh. Shout out Robert Fisk, Vanessa Bealey. Shout Eva out to Bartlett. Vanessa, Eva. Yep. Uh, anyway, so... After the chemical attack, these findings strongly imply that the attack was staged to trigger Western military intervention. Jankowicz, of course, was a proponent of the absurd Russiagate theory, claiming that Trump was soft on Russia, despite lethal arms to Ukraine, sanctions on Nord Stream, etc. Spreading a theory that Trump was doing the bidding of Putin if he didn't overthrow the government of Venezuela. And spreading the debunked Russian bounties on American troops in Afghanistan theory. Oh, remember that one? And what about the ones where mm -hmm. they pass out? They pass out um, um, Viagra. There's always there's always that story that floats around. That always comes out of her too. So we know what's going on in Nina's world. All right. Um, 
And she's got all of us. <laughs> she has all of us blocked, by the way, uh, on on Twitter. Like, Every single person here is blocked. Do they? They do know that the military has our military is provided Viagra. No. Um. Like. Maybe. It's literally pro- anytime you ever go on a mountainous expedition, they provide it. Ah. Uh-huh. Like in Afghanistan. No, I did not know that. Why would they want you to? Yeah, be- because. Because Viagra has to deal with a blood level and oxygen level. Mm. So if you go up where there's low oxygen and it could be the difference between you having not enough oxygen and having more. It's just the side effect of which might be a three hour, you know, problem. But a three <laughs> hour know. tour, a three hour <laughs> right. tour. Yes. Okay. So um well, Jankowitz, whatever. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Jankowitz also repeated the debunk claim that the contents of the Hunter Biden laptop are Russian disinformation because that's what 17 the, uh, in, intelligence, quote unquote, information agencies that were trying to skew the narrative away from that uh, were trying to do. So she obviously works with them. The most disturbing fact of Jankowitz's past record, which isn't even any of those, was reported by the nation's Lev Golinkin, uh, who then revealed that while working for the U.S. government-funded anti-disinformation group Stop Fake in Ukraine, she whitewashed mm-hmm. neo-Nazi parliamentary groups, paramilitary, parliamentary, well, they might as well be, but the, no, neo-Nazi paramilitary groups who have well-documented histories of human rights abuses. Never met a Nazi she didn't love. Nina Jankowitz also has a long history of attacking dissident journalists by name. She called WikiLeaks scum and accused it of being a cog in a much larger operation. She claimed Glenn Greenwald was disgusting and responsible for online harassment against women. Because, of course, he critiqued New York Times reporter at the time, now Russian independent. Scum! Yep, the, uh, Taylor Lorenz, for her bad reporting, which it is. She also called the anti-war outlet Gray Zone, the Gray Zone, a Russian influence op and a source of disinfo because she took issue with their reporting and criticism of American foreign policy. Plus, that's what Bellingcrap has been spreading, and she takes everything they say as the gospel. While the Disinformation Governance Board was eventually shut down after sp- facing widespread backlash, journalists Lee Fong and Ken Klippenstein revealed that the DHS continued to police speech online. And they would know. I'll just drop that right there. Um, but also, we're continuing on the records of the Biden administration. We haven't even gotten to the record of the Trump administration on censorship and press freedom and and journalism. Because don't forget, Jamal Khashoggi, I believe, happened under Trump as well. We're going to get to that, but let's also remember that under Biden, Democrats ignored the Twitter files and shoot the messenger. Now, there are some, and some who we are very close with, who will say that the Twitter files was a limited hangout, that they only got screenshots, that it wasn't source data, but they were, and that it was hand-selected and filtered through Twitter's lawyers, and it was very partisan. And I will say, agreed to all of that. However, however, there was still a lot of important information and confirmations of things that were questionable. So when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he leaked a trove of internal documents to reporters such as Matt Taibbi, Lee Fung, and Michael Schellenberger. There was also, um, what's her name? Barry Weiss, who I don't like, and Alex Guttentag mm. on the COVID files, and there were several others as well. But those were the three most famous. Some of the biggest scandals revealed by these documents were that the FBI, DHS, DNI, and NSA worked with Twitter to censor American speech, a direct violation of the First Amendment. But other, And then other sense, stories of censorship revealed by the Twitter files were that Twitter worked with the government-aligned think tank Virality Project to censor people going against official narrative around COVID, including reports of of vaccinated people contracting COVID, natural immunity, saying COVID was leaked from a lab, and stories of true vaccine effects, safe and effective, safe and effective. They also revealed that big pharma-funded think- Coronavirus! Right, that? 
They also revealed that big pharma funded think tanks were pressuring Twitter to take down people pushing for a generic vaccine and those opposed, of course, to, van to vaccine mandates. That's when you got your anti-vax hunters started to come out. Mm. When journalists Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger testified to the House Judiciary Committee, uh, <laughs> we, of course, covered that on how do we miss that extensively. Democrats on the committee, led by Joe Biden, no, not by Joe, well, okay, undermined the contents of these documents and defended the censorship policy. Democratic Representative Colin Allred of Texas, who was a former Dallas Cowboy, and now he's running for Senate against Ted Cruz, said to Taibbi, the dumbest thing I've ever heard anybody say, if you can take off the tinfoil hat, you will see that there is not a vast conspiracy, but that ordinary folks and national security agencies responsible for our security are trying their best to find a way that our online discourse doesn't get people hurt or see our democracy undermined. A word oh, really? salad. Damn, it must be true. A word salad of all word salads. All right. Just no, that's <coughs> you, uh, that's straight censorship or monitoring of speech, free speech, speech that is supposed to be free and protected so that you can feel better. And that is not cool. No. So Democratic Representative Sylvia Garcia, of course, demanded that Taibbi reveal his source, that Musk as his source for the Twitter files, which is a direct violation of journalistic ethics. And Taibbi literally said, I am willing to go to jail. Look, you may know who it is, but I can't tell you who it is. That's the same thing as Julian Assange with a guy by the name of Seth Rich, by the way. He can't tell you who it is. Right. Democratic representative yep. and Democratic primary rigger, De Debbie Washerman Schultz, very nice dissident, accused Taibbi of hitting the jackpot for reporting this story while ignoring the content. <laughs> of course, the Democrats' reaction to the, to the Twitter files went even further than this. We know the FTC tried to demand that Elon Musk turn over the names of all journalists who received Twitter files. And Taibbi, coincidentally, quote-unquote, received a visit from the IRS the same day he testified on Capitol Hill on, about the Twitter files. Hey, how about that? And as the, Wall Street, that? as the Wall Street Journal once put it, quote, the curious timing of this visit on the heels of the FTC demand that Twitter turn over the names of journalists raises questions about potential intimidation. The Wall Street <laughs> potential. You think? you think? The Wall Street Journal potential. also also noted that it is not typical for the IRS to show up unannounced at people's houses, saying that typically when the IRS challenges some part of a tax return, it sends a dunning letter, or it might send, uh, seek more information from the taxpayer or tax preparer, the accountant. If the IRS wants to audit a return, it schedules a meeting at the agent's office. It doesn't drop by unannounced. Like he's fucking Kool-Aid man. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when Taibbi was interviewed by MSNBC host and propagandist Mehdi Hassan, Hassan attacked Taibbi, of course, for a few minor errors, the difference between CIS and CISA in the Twitter files reporting while ignoring the bulk of the revelations because he was told to by his bosses. And he can lie and say he wasn't, but we all know it. I just... I have I have yet to meet a Hassan that I thought was a good person. I'm well, sure I'm sure some I assume are good some I assume are good people, but all the uh, people tell me Hassans, they're terrible people. Oh right? yeah. The worst people. <laughs> all right. And then That's of true. course and then of course we, we have disturbingly this interview was used then by Democratic representative who's never really been elected, she's appointed Stacey Plaskett, to accuse Taibbi uh -huh. of perjury and then threaten him with up to five years in jail. Plaskett, of course, uh -huh. accused, uh, accused him of perjury for a few honest mistakes, which he corrected and did not, uh, and, and of course, also didn't undermine the bulk of the story. They, you know, whether one was paid by the government or was connected to the government and taking orders from and working with the government, it effectively meant the same thing between CIS and CISA. Yeah. And that was it. They tried to bog you down on a technicality that doesn't matter to drown out the story that does. And they effectively did that to the shit lips. 
So now we're going to look at the record of the Trump administration. But were there anything on this list from Biden that we missed? I mean, that that's a fucking laundry list, by the way. But going after Matt Taibbi and ignoring the Twitter files, prosecuting Julian Assange, pointing to Nina Jankowicz and the head of head of misinformation, the Obama stuff and all the prosecution of whistleblowers. And the espionage, act, well, again, forcing Assange into a plea deal. Did, did that Miss Plaskett have, have any connection to a particular island owner? Um, uh, well, there was some kind possibly. of a connection. There was some kind of a connection, but I she also, mm. uh, yeah, there was some kind of, maybe a, a city group connection to her, uh, a Jamie, Jamie Dimon. I, I, I don't remember who it was. You can't quote me, uh, allegedly. Um, Neil Diamond, maybe it could be Neil Diamond. It's it's Sweet Caroline, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, that plasket, according <laughs> according to our friend David Denuno over there, who says yes, that that plasket, yes, I guess that is her. Um, but let's get back to the Trump record from torturing and trying to kill Julian Assange. Thank you, Mike Pompeo, to threatening to deport anti genocide activists. Right, the gravest threat to press freedom. So again, this is the dissident reporting uh, the 307.substack.com and all these notes will be in the description and in the Substack afterwards. You can go to uh, IndieMediaToday.com for the Substack. So while the Obama administration prosecuted more whistleblowers than all the other administrations combined, the one line they did not cross was going after Assange and WikiLeaks. But this was because they understood they couldn't do this without prosecuting U.S. news organizations and journalists. This yeah, line... They yeah. wouldn't do. Well, the, they didn't in the Obama administration, but the Trump administration certainly had no problem with it. They crossed that line, who brought yeah. espionage charges against Assange for publishing documents leaked to him by Chelsea Manning. This was a grave threat to press freedom, as Reporters Without Borders put it. Quote, this would set a precedent, a dangerous precedent for all journalists who publish classified information that is of public interest. Yes, that was their plan. The case was condemned as a threat to free speech by human rights groups like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch that have issues of their own. Uh huh. Civil rights. Yes, they do. Civil liberties organizations like the ACLU and even the New York Times that are also incredibly neolib controlled and not nearly as respected as they should be. I mean, respected a lot more than times. they should be. More like respected more than they should be, sorry. Mm -hmm. Because of this charge, Assange was forced to be in solitary confinement in Belmarsh Prison, which the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture Nils Melzer and two other medical experts concluded, quote, constituted psychological torture in a form of torture aimed at destroying the personality of an individual, unquote. The Trump administration attempted to go even further than prosecuting and torturing a journalist for releasing classified material about war crimes and tried to kidnap and kill him. We know this because Yahoo News reported in 2021 that Trump administration officials and the CIA had plotted to kidnap Julian Assange and even discussed assassinating him at the highest levels of the Trump administration. Yeah, that was Pompeo and Trump discussed that. Trump even put whistleblower Chelsea Manning back in jail after being released in 2017 because she refused to testify against Assange in this bogus case. Yep. People forget a lot of this stuff. Trump supporters insist he's fighting the deep state. But his administration went even further than Obama and Biden in the war on whistleblowers by prosecuting not only whistleblowers, but reporters who publish information leaked by them which is protected by the First Amendment, by the way. Trump, well, it was, and now we don't know. Now that yeah. he's been forced into a deal, they can they can use that as precedent. But they're claiming that they're not going to be able to, which is we know that they will when, they, when they'll need to. Trump also did not pardon any of the whistleblowers prosecuted in the Obama-Biden administration and prosecuted whistleblower reality winner, thank you so much again to The Intercept, using the Espionage Act. I don't stand for that. Yep. So 
Trump threatens to crack down on the Palestine solidarity movement. And this is another thing that we are concerned about. Of course, while Trump and his supporters claim to support free speech, they abandon this view when it comes to the people protesting the genocide in Gaza. Huh, how about that? Yep. Follow about the money. It. It's uh, it, it comes to the Adelsons usually. The Republican 2024 platform says it wants to, quote, deport pro-Hamas radicals and make our college campuses safe and patriotic again. Where are you deporting Americans that are pro-Hamas? What? what? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a clear threat to deport foreign students protesting the genocide in Gaza and to crack down on the rights of American students protesting the genocide. In the education section, the platform says it will fire radical left accreditors on college campuses, a clear threat to the First Amendment, and something that will certainly be used to crack down on professors critical of Israel and their repression of the and slaughter of Palestinians. Journalist and friend of the show, Max Blumenthal from the Gray Zone, reported that the pro-Trump Fox News, former NYPD inspector Paul Morrow, said pro-Palestinian protesters on college campuses were responsible for the attempted Trump assassination and needed to be investigated. Don't lie. You lie. You lie. This is a good insight into how the Trump administration will crack down on anti-genocide protesters if he's elected in 2024. Uh-huh. So, if and when now that we're dealing with a clown show on the other side, but... Again, I don't this really is the care. Most election of our lifetime. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. For whether it's Pokemon go to the polls or it's anybody else, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. So, like on many other issues, both candidates are in, no matter who it is in 2024 of the blue and red parties. Again, not eliminating that there are other candidates that all have their own issues by the way, but aren't really polling at any significant number. Sorry, Booby, you're not. You're not. Give it up. The Democrats have gone full authoritarian uh -huh. under Biden, trying to censor the Internet and crack down on dissident journalists and whistleblowers. While Trump supporters believe he is the antidote to this, his record on freedom of the press and his threats to crack down on anti-genocide protesters show he will not be any better. He also is looking at Jamie Dimon for Treasury Secretary and Larry Fink for Commerce Secretary. So, again, uh -huh. let's cue up Misty. We're what we're fucked right yes we're very much fucked so that was a long one from the dissident but it was good and, and substantive and reminds us of all the crap that we've been putting up with thank you so much to the uh uniparty because it doesn't matter pretty no. pretty 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 good just remember nothing fundamentally changed and that, that's what was promised, and that's what we are getting. Um, all right, so... Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Except for these people that we, we <laughs> deeply, deeply appreciate, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, fams. Uh, we got a whole bunch of people out there. Uh, you got Topher over on Kick. I don't know who Topher is, but welcome. Good to see you. It's me, Sarah P. I see her over there. But all these wonderful e people have supported our channel and supported independent media by kicking in a couple of bucks to help us keep the lights on. And we, we That's operate on a, there. we operate on a value for value system here as some of our friends well, in independent media like to say. And uh, that's how we covered it. Three four years, years ago. ago. Well, we've been saying <laughs> this shit for four years now. So, uh, Oh, Oh, to uh, to our friends that that have not completely lost their fucking minds and aren't just losing the plot. And thank God for some of them. Cookies, yes, please donate to INN if you can. Making stream content is not free or cheap. Cookies would know he's now doing the Tin Rabbit podcast with Mastermind Hour and is learning all about just how much time, effort, money, and sweat and aggravation has to go into making shows like this and we love it and we do and but we certainly love getting some support too 